Hello, tiny friends. Welcome back to Tiny Keyhole Minis. I'm Jolene, and today I'll be showing you how I am going to revamp a couple vacuums. Before I created my channel, I made this Hoover replica, and this one has an extremely long cord, but I did that intentionally so that Miss Margot could vacuum a whole room without having to unplug it. <laughs> but it can easily be wound up and hung on the hook and then stored away. So today I'm gonna to show you what I used and hopefully you'll be inspired to create or revamp some of your own. I found this ugly brown mass produced vacuum online and I purchased a few of them. They're fairly cheap. I think I paid like three to $5 for one. So I purchased three of them. I knew I wanted one for the house and that I wanted to recreate a couple for my shop. I was totally inspired to do this by a room box scene from Denise Morales that I seen on Pinterest. Now I'm gonna put the link to her miniature site in the description box below. You guys have got to see this. It's called It's Laundry Day. And her room box is filled with tons of detail and tons of inspiration. And that makes it one of my favorite miniature scenes of all times. And she describes and explains how she creates a lot of the pieces and what she uses. And in that scene, I saw a vacuum cleaner that I absolutely loved. And I searched for some of my own that I could revamp. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. It has actually inspired me to create a few of my own miniatures that you see around the Josephine house. I already started this one, so I'm going to be finishing it off and then I'm going to redo the other one. And I'm using different techniques. I just wanted to try different things for this. So they'll be quite different. One will have paints and one will not. So for the Hoover vacuum, I picked a photo from the 30s and I just recreated that. I only added a little bit of detail to this, but I did use the same brown bag and just painted it. It made it a lot stiffer. And then I used rub-ons from the Dollar Tree to create the word Hoover. And I just kind of replicated the photo I was referencing. I used chalk paints to begin with this one. I don't have any solid ideas in my head, so I'm just gonna be creating as I go along. This is one of those fun creations that you just pull out what you have and come up with your own ideas. It's so versatile, you can make it any way you want it to become one of a kind and to suit your own scene. I'm gonna use this piece of fabric to finish off the vacuum I started and I received this from our good tiny friend Dot at the doll cupboard. Thank you so much, Dot, for sending me some fabrics. You can see that the bag is just tied on with some thread and then it is connected to the pole with some more thread and there is a little tiny jump ring as well. You can use the same bag and paint it or you can replace it with any type of fabric you would like. These things are very easy to take apart so I'm gonna take this bag off and like the Hoover vacuum, I used the brown bag and just painted it. So that's an option for you as well. I'm gonna be replacing both bags today, but I'm gonna use it as a template for my new bags. And then I'll probably just use this for something else later on. The brown bag measures about three inches by three inches. And my new bags are gonna measure three inches uh, by two and a half um, because I'll be trimming that down some as well but I think that three inches by two and a half is perfect so you can go with that you'll have a little space to trim down some and you won't be using or wasting a lot of your fabric so in the end your bag should be three inches long and about an inch wide and you're gonna want that half of inch extra for your seam and then that leaves you enough to trim off. So your seam should probably be uh, about a quarter of an inch or a little less. If you're really good at this, then you could just cut your piece two and a quarter inches, but I'm just estimating a little bit of 
working space. Especially for those of you that are new at this and this is your first time trying something like this or working with fabrics. Now, you don't need to use uh, your sewing machine or sewing needle and thread. You don't need to sew this. So if you don't have access to that or don't know how to do that, don't worry about it. You're going to be using glue for this. At least it's an option for you. So if you like to sew it, by all means, you choose what's best for you. But I'm going to take a little bit of cotton and you can use anything. This is just filler from an old pillow. You can use cotton balls. You can use fabric. Whatever you have, use what you have. I'm just taking a tiny, tiny bit. You're only going to need a little bit. And I'm just doing this to make the bag look like there's stuff in it. So this is just an option. You can totally opt out of this if you'd like. It just helps to give a little more realism to the bag so it doesn't look so flat. So I'm just gonna put my piece up to the vacuum just to eyeball it. I'm basically just eyeballing this, but before I actually glued this together, I did measure it to give you some measurements. Um, I'm just making sure that uh, those measurements are gonna be good. So I'm gonna trim off the excess and then I'm gonna use my liquid stitch. Now you can use regular PVA glue, you can use fabric tack, you can use liquid stitch. I'm gonna use my liquid stitch for this and my little clover iron just to fuse it a little quicker for the video. If you're using regular PVA glue or tacky glue, or if you don't have a clover iron, you're using one of these fabric glues, just give it a little time before you uh, mess around with your fabric. Now this piece of fabric has two different sides to it. One side's a lot softer and the other side isn't as soft. And I want the softer side to be on the inside. So I'm gonna be doing this inside out and I'm actually putting the glue on the side I want to be seen. So uh, once this is attached together, I'll be flipping it inside out. Uh, it's kind of confusing if you are new to this, but trust me, whatever side of the fabric you want to be seen, you put that side facing up, put your glue on the very edge, fold your fabric over, attach the pieces together, let it sit aside to dry, and then we're going to flip this inside out. So the side that's inside and I'm closing up will actually be the outside and the side that you see now is actually going to be the inside this way your seam will be tucked in on the inside and the fabric side that you want to be seen will be on the outside so I'm just fusing it closed with my clover iron I hope that wasn't too confusing it's kind of like the same way you would make a little pillow but if you don't have a clover iron to fuse your glue securely you're definitely going to want to let it sit until it's completely dry so that your seam doesn't pop open when you turn this inside out well technically this is inside out but when you turn this right side out the iron just helps speed up the process so i'm going to trim this excess off because i don't need that much and then i'm going to carefully turn it inside out right side out <laughs> you know what i mean and I am just gonna do this slowly. And what I'm doing is just kind of working it from the bottom, not from the top part that you see where the edge is. So I'm just taking my fingers and just kind of tucking the bottom out. So this way I can work it from the inside, not from the edge, and it'll help keep that seam from pulling apart kind of hard to explain but you can see how I'm working this I'm pulling it from the inner not the outside where the edge is and this just helps keep your seam together a little better so now I got a nice little bag with a nice seam and looks like it's sewn. I'm gonna keep the seam facing the back of the vacuum so you don't see it from the front. 
Now I'm going to put my cotton inside and I'm just going to use my tweezers to kind of get in there and spread it around evenly. You can use whatever you have. You just want to kind of spread it out so it's not clumped up in one space and it looks more natural and just kind of fills the bag a little. Okay, to close the top and give it a little more detail, I'm gonna use this aluminum tape because I found a giant roll in my garage and I've been dying to use this. And I'm so glad I found this before I went out and bought some because I've been watching Shira at Queen City Minis use some and I'm like, gosh, I need some of that. And fortunately, I had some already. But for the Hoover Vac, I just used a piece of a aluminum pie or a foil baking pan and just cut a strip off of that. You can use several different things. You can use cardstock and paint it. You can use um, chipboard. You don't have to do this option. You can use uh, trimming from other fabrics. You can use ribbon. You can use lace trimming, whatever you have, whatever your heart desires. I'm just using this for mine, but you can use several different things to add this detail, or you don't have to use anything at all. You can just glue the top part closed and call it a day. So for my strip, I'm just gonna use about a quarter of an inch and then fold that in half. If you're gonna go with paper or card or you do have some of this foil tape or you're using a piece of tin from a pie or baking pan, I found it easier to fold it first and then add it to your piece. Just glue it on or if you got the tape, I'm not even adding additional glue for the tape. I'm just gonna tape it on there. Uh, you can glue your bag closed first and then add the additional detail on if that's what you choose to do. If you're adding a piece of ribbon or another type of fabric um, or any type of string or anything like that, then you want to close your bag with glue first to seal it shut and then go ahead and add your trimming. Even if you're using card or paper or piece of tin, you probably want to seal your bag shut with glue first and then go ahead and glue that on for additional detail. But because this is a pretty strong piece of tape that I'm using, I'm not even gonna worry about gluing the bag shut first. I'm just gonna apply it to the top and let the tape seal the bag shut. If you wanna use masking tape or duct tape, it's gonna be like the same concept as this tape. And then you can go ahead and paint over that whatever color you choose. So you can use a different type of tape as well. You just wanna make sure that you're using a nice strong tape. You can always glue your bag shut first and then add the tape. And you can also paint the piece of tape first and then add it to your bag so that you don't accidentally get paint on your bag. So there's tons of different options, tons of different ways to go about this. You just choose whatever is best for you and use whatever you have. Like I said, this is such a versatile, a project you could just make it any way you want no need to go out and purchase anything additional for this except for the vacuum unless you have one already okay so I got my trimming on my tape is secured and now I let's see what am I gonna do I'm gonna wait to seal the bottom because that's gonna be connected to the vacuum so I need to finish painting the vacuum and get that nice and ready before I add the bag. So make sure that you have your vacuum completed before you add your bag, especially if you're using paint, because you want to make sure those paints are nice and dried. So it'll be attached to the back, something like this. So I'm going to pull out my chalk paint and finish painting this. I'm actually using a celery colored chalk paint by Waverly. And this is a pretty old paint i've had it for so long if your chalk paints get super thick from sitting in the bottle for a while which they will tend to do just shake your bottle really well it loosens it up and you can also apply a little bit of water to your brush to spread it out if it's too thick it'll help apply the paint a lot smoother and softer 
and leave less brush marks. I'm gonna go in with my testers enamel paint and paint all the parts I want to be silver. And you can use several different paints to paint metal, but you wanna make sure you're using a paint that's really gonna stick to metal. Acrylic paints will stick to metal, but chalk paints stick very well and so does enamel paint. The enamel paint is made for metals and chalk paint just sticks to everything but you wanna add an additional varnish afterwards to keep it from scratching because it scratches so easily. So the chalk paint will chip off if you do not apply some sort of varnish to protect it and seal it in. But that's why I chose a different technique for this one and I wanted to experiment a little bit. So with this one, I am not gonna use any paint at all uh, except for a little bit later on to age it. I'm gonna sand this paint off with my nail file and I'm also gonna be using a fine grit sandpaper. The paint comes off super easily. So it's not a lot of hard sanding and it doesn't take very long. But you do wanna protect yourself. So make sure you're wearing a mask while you're sanding anything. I am gonna sand the parts that I want to show metal and I'm leaving a little bit of that paint behind for aging and I'm also going to sand the areas that I'm going to be covering but for those areas I don't have to sand all the way down to see the silver I just need to rough it up a little to take off some of this varnish so that what I apply to it will help stick a little better okay so I found some of this scrapbooking paper in my stash and I really liked it a lot so I'm going to use it on the vacuum and give the vacuum a little bit of a pattern design I've already used it on another project but I just got a little scrap piece that was already cut I'm going to cut a half circle out of the top just to go around that midsection of the vacuum and I'm just going to apply it to different areas of the vacuum just to bring it all together just taken my pencil and traced around that circular part of the vacuum just so I can get a more accurate cut and I'm just going to trim that out and now I'm using matte Mod Podge you can use tacky glue or PVA glue for this if you don't have any Mod Podge but uh, Mod Podge works really well for this I'm applying the scrap paper and I'm just kind of like decoupaging the areas that I want to cover. I'm going to let this piece dry completely before I trim off any of the excess. I'm going to cover the handle as well using the same technique. So I've applied the Mod Podge and then I tightly wrap the paper around and I'm just going to close it up and trim off the excess. I'm going to wrap it on itself a little further because there was a scratch on the paper and I want to cover that up. Once you got your pieces on and you know that they're good, you want to apply another layer of Mod Podge just to give it a protective coat and seal it up nice and securely. You can use uh, tacky glue for this as well if you're using tacky glue and just give it a layer of that. You might wanna thin your tacky glue down just a little bit by adding additional water to the brush. And now I've cut out a circle and I've just eyeballed this. I also cut a few slits all around the circle and I'm just gonna place it on top of this midsection where it's a rounder piece. I let my pieces dry completely before trimming off any excess and I'm just using my craft knife to carefully cut those parts off. So I just took my time with this one uh, because I didn't want to cut into a space that would affect the design. So I just did a little bit at a time 
for the parts that I had to cut down. And now I'm going to go in for a final coat of Mod Podge to cover all my paper pieces up. For the bag, I'm going to use this old thermal shirt that one of my friends no longer wanted and I claimed it for the fabric. And this kind of has a similar uh, pattern as the paper, so I thought it would be kind of cool to use it. It's a little bit of a thinner thermal and softer, but I'm going to use some of this acrylic paint just to lightly paint over it, just to give it some added color. I'm just going to kind of dry brush this on. I didn't want to cover it completely. I just want to give it a little bit of added color. I still want that brown to show through. Once that was all done, I decided to go in and remove a little more of that brown paint. And it was pretty easy to just remove the whole handle off of the vacuum base. So I'm just using a really fine grit sandpaper to do this. The handle will snap back into place into the little grooves. And I'm just going to use my needle nose pliers to give it a squeeze to tighten it up just a little more. Now that the vacuum is completed, it's time to add the bag. I used the same tape technique for the trimming, only this time I glued the bag closed first before applying the tape because the fabric is a bit thicker. I replaced the jump rings with one size bigger and it's very easy to stick the end of the jump ring in through the fabric and I've done this with several different kinds of fabrics and I never had a problem. So you just poke the one end through, loop it up bring it back out so that it's kind of looped in the bag and then I brought the front opening part around the post and now I'm just straightening it out so that I can close it with my pliers. If you don't have any jump rings you can use a piece of wire or you can use some thread but you kind of want to put it up towards the top of the bag and this is probably about a quarter inch down from the bottom of the strip of the bag so it's probably a total of a half of an inch down from the very top of the bag okay on this vacuum there's a little ring that is molded to the post it doesn't matter if your jump ring or your bag is attached to above or below that little ring as long as your post can move up and down and your bag can sit straight up on the bottom, there's a little ledge where the bag is gonna be attached to. You wanna make sure that you're wrapping in front of that ledge. That'll help hold your piece into place and I'll show you as I go along. So for this one, here's the ring and this is how it should look before you attach it to your post. So you kinda just wanna loop it in and have it sticking out. For attachment to the bottom, I'm just gonna use a twisty tie. So use what you have. I removed some of the coating off and I'm gonna use the wire that's inside. And what I've done is I've wrapped the fabric around the bottom section and I've pulled it all together and gathered it nice and tight in the back. And now I'm gonna wrap the wire in the front. I have the bag fabric secured in the back and I'm making sure that the wire is sitting in front of this ledge. That ledge will help your wire from slipping off. It'll keep it nice and tight in place. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna begin to twist my wire nice and tightly and I'm holding the fabric down and I'm gonna twist the wire at the base right near the fabric and I'm just gonna keep twisting down there at the bottom so that it's kind of touching the fabric and it'll tighten up right around that fabric. I'm gonna use my needle nose pliers to tighten it up as much as I can and using a twisty tie is super easy to work with. So if you have any lying about, just use one of those. Now the bag is nice and secured and I'm giving it a little bit of a tug, it's not coming off. 
I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess wire. I'm just going to give it a little snip. This wire is super thin and just perfect for this type of use. Then I'm going to flatten down the very end of it so no one gets poked and gets hurt and make sure that that's not sticking out because it's a little sharp but you could just tuck that down and it won't even interfere and you won't even know it's there. Okay, my bags are on and you should be able to move your post up and down and you should be able to sit your post straight up so your bag is sitting straight up. I had to make some adjustments to the bottom of the brown bag just so I can get it to stand straight up. I just pulled the fabric out a little more because it was so tight that I couldn't get it to stand up. But now it's working fine and it's time to add some details. So I went through my little bits and bobs and found some pieces that I can attach to the wheels just to give them a little more added design. These vacuums don't have any details at all. So this is where you can get super creative and just let your imagination go. So you can use cardstock, you can use chipboard, you can use paper pieces, you can stack your uh, chipboard to make them thicker pieces and just add whatever you would like. I found these little tacks and I've cut off the um, ends to them so they look kind of like little round buttons and I'm going to use some jump rings and I'm just going to apply them to the wheels just to make them look a little more detailed. These pieces were given to me from Shira from Queen City Minis in a box of bits and bobs and I just thought they would be really good pieces to use uh, for the wheels. They came in different colors and they look like little tacks. So I just trimmed off the pieces to them so that they're just little circle buttons. I'm gonna use the back of my cutting tool just to flatten the jump rings down so they're not sticking out and they're nice and flat and I can glue them right to the wheel. So I'm just using a little bit of the super glue, applying it to the jump ring. I'm gonna attach it to the wheel. Once I get that adjusted into place, I'm gonna add a little bit of the super glue to the little button that I cut down and just place that right in the center of the jump ring. I have a larger jump ring and I'm going to place that around the center where I added that paper just to give that a little added detail. Okay, for the green one, I found one little green button tack and I clipped the ends off and I'm just gonna place it on top right in the middle here. And I thought that made a great little detail. So that's where that went. I'm gonna do the same thing with the wheels as I did with the brown one, only this time I'm gonna use the black tacks. For the brown one, they were actually bronze. I'm going to go in and age these up a little bit so I'm just adding a little bit of watered down brown acrylic right in the creases. I'm just going to go all around the vacuum base and the post and I'm going to also add a little bit to that white just to bring that white down just a little bit. For the plugs, I am using rubber earring backs. You can use metal ones, but the rubber ones are a lot smaller and more fitting for the 112 size. So I've painted it with my Folk Art Black Sequit acrylic paint. It's super shiny when it dries and makes it look like metal. 
and now I'm going to attach a cord to that. I'm also using some scrap uh, wire just to create little hooks to hold the cords. For this one, I added a little bit of satin varnish by Duraclear and I just coated all the paint. This way, the chalk paint doesn't look so flat. It gives it a little bit of shine and it will seal and protect the paint. To make the prongs for your plug, you can use several different things. You can use real metal little pieces or you can use mat board, you can use toothpicks, you can use little pieces of wood, cardstock, craft paper, chipboard. I'm using a piece of scrap cardstock. I just added a little bit of tacky glue on the end and I'm just going to fold it over on itself. For cardstock and chipboard, this part really isn't necessary because it's a thicker type of paper and it's going to be harder to work with when you're cutting it down but if you're using a regular paper or you're using craft paper you might want to do this step so i like to take the ends glue them and fold them over on top of themselves because a lot of the old prongs actually look like they're folded over and this just gives that added detail. But again, if you're using a thicker paper, it's gonna be more difficult to cut, so you really don't need to do this. Plus, these things are so tiny that you really don't need to do this. I just gotten used to doing this, so this is just what I do. With a thinner paper, you definitely might wanna do this because it'll thicken up the paper in the end. And I've used a metallic antique gold by Folk Art to paint it. And now I'm just gonna attach the hook. For this one, I'm attaching the hook right on the back of the handle like I did with the Hoover Vac. And I'm just using my Loctite super glue for this. For the brown one, I switched it up and I just turned the hook to the side of the post so that when you're hanging up the cord, it'll hang on the side of the post instead of the back. You can use several different options for your cord. I'm going to use um, a hemp cord. It's a little bit stiffer than embroidery string. And I'm just going to color it with some leftover watered down brown acrylic that was sitting in my bowl. And I'm just using that up. But you can choose whatever color you would like. Cords come in all different types of colors. You can use any type of string. While that dries, I'm gonna cut tiny little pieces off for my prongs, and this is what they look like. And then I'm just gonna use tacky glue to apply these to the earring back. So I'm just dipping the very end, and then I'm just gonna place them on the flat part of the earring back. These things are so tiny and can be quite fiddly to put into place. It did take some time to get them just right, so you might want to put on a pair of patience pants for this. And if you don't have any, maybe you can borrow a pair. <laughs> to attach the cord, I'm just adding a little bit of tacky glue on the end, and then I'm tucking it right into the fabric underneath the vacuum. And then I'm just gonna set it aside to let it dry completely before coming back to it. I did the same thing for the green one, but I just placed the cord a little more to the side. Finally, I'm just gonna dip the end of the cord in some tacky glue and stick it to the back of the earring back. Now, this glue is a lot fresher, so it's gonna take a little bit longer to stick. If you let your tacky glue sit just a little bit to thicken up, it'll stick right away. I'm just gonna make some adjustments and then let it sit to fully dry. It's the next day and I've let these dry completely and this is what the cord looks like. 
You can straighten out your plug if it needs to be adjusted. I'm just gonna wrap it around the tip of my finger so it's easier to come off and I get a tighter wrap. And then I'm just gonna hang it right on the little hook. And there you have it, tiny friends, your own little customized vacuum that you can be proud to place and display in one of your miniature scenes. It was super fun to recreate these vacuums and you could just use whatever you have to make it a one of a kind piece. So I hope you were inspired to recreate one of your own. I hope you all enjoyed this video today. And if you have, please click that like button and give it a thumbs up. And let me know what you thought about these neat little vintage vacuums in the comments below. I want to thank all my subscribers. Welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you for joining my miniature journey. And don't forget to hit that top bell notification button to be notified every time I upload a new project. So until next time, tiny friends, I hope you all have a lovely day. And I will see you all on the mini side. Bye-bye.